Hello, I'm Steve and welcome to the Geek Group. Today we are on the roof of the Leonard Street Labs working on a uh, air conditioner for the office. The uh, motor burned up in it and the coils are all blackened so today we're installing a new motor and we'll show you how to put the motor in and clean up the unit a little bit. So uh, stay tuned and we'll show you how this all works. Before servicing any electrical equipment, make sure it is properly locked out and power is off. For most small air conditioners, if you open up the uh, circuit box and the disconnect, you'll pull a small plug out of it. This is a jumper that enables power. With this out, there is no power in the unit except within the fuse block. So this shuts off power to the fuse block. With this out, the machine is safe to work on and there should be no hazardous voltages inside. If you're unsure, always check high voltages with a multimeter to ensure that they are off. Now that we have our power off, we can open the service panels and start uh, reassembling our motor. In order to service the motor on this unit, the top needs to be removed. There's screws all the way around the top. We'll pull those out and then lift the uh, cover off the unit and that'll give us access inside. We're ready for the fun part here. The left side of the unit here is the return air side. On the bottom is the return air from the building. This scoop and damper assembly here is called an economizer. It allows the unit to draw an outside air on cool days. So if it's cooler outside than inside, it can use outside air to cool instead of running the compressor. If you take a look here, it's actually quite dusty on this side. And here's our filter. And the filter is probably the cause of our motor failure. As you can see, it's pretty well clogged solid. With an air-cooled motor and no airflow over it, it probably overheated and the winding bur windings burned up. So remember, always keep your furnace filters clean because you do not want a blower failure. You look at the other side here, this is where our blower is going to assembly the motor mounts in the middle and that side's fairly clean seeing the air filter helps keep the debris out of there so the unit looks fairly clean we'll vacuum out the economizer and return side before we close it up but let's get uh, started on remounting our new motor our original motor uses um, a mounting flange system here of three ears that mounts into a ring in the center of the blower assembly our new motor has an external strap with the uh, mounting flange on it that wraps around it so we're going to have to get that aligned up so the shaft lands in the same spot. Here is our shiny new motor. Here's our old motor. Our replacement motor is a universal motor so it has a number of options the original did not have and therefore a couple extra wires. The first one is this black white pair which is actually used to set rotation of the motor. If you align black and white, white and white, see white, white, black, black, you get, if they're wired straight through, you have clockwise rotation. If you disconnect and flip the wires so you have black and white together, you end up with counterclockwise. So we have to double check our rotation direction here before we assemble everything to make sure if the motor will run in the correct direction. Along with that, another difference in our motor is it's a three-speed versus a two-speed motor. So we have four leads versus just the three. The brown leads over here are for the starter capacitor, which is used to start the motor. So we're gonna have to look at our speed pairing, our purple wire is common, and then our three speeds being black is high, blue is medium, and red is low. So these are speed selectors, depending on which one you hook to the power line determines which um, speed the motor rotates. 
Because this is an air conditioner, we're going to use the high speed, seeing it single speed. If you have, um, generally air conditioners use a higher speed. If you're heating, you'll often use a lower fan speed. So we're going to get the uh, mounting ring installed here and get this ready to mount back into the blower compartment. When using a motor with a wraparound strap, make sure it is suitably tight so the motor does not slip in the mounting assembly. When mounting a item with rubber isolation washers, tighten them till the washer just begins to squish. You don't want them loose, but you don't want to compress the rubber all the way because it needs to be able to absorb vibration still. So you need a balance there between tight and not too tight. So I've got the mounting flange installed. The flat here on it faces away toward the street and my electrical comes off that end as well so I've got that set. Next I have to install the blade assembly here. Because the new shaft is about an inch longer than the old one and should any service have to happen on this again I'm going to put a little bit of grease on the shaft. Not much, just a little dab on your finger. Basically you just want a thin film of grease on the shaft to prevent it from rusting. Not enough that the spinning motor is going to throw it, just enough to help stuff go on and keep that from making a mess. Anti-seize also works if you have that. We don't have any right now, so this will work. That slides on there. You can see the grease also helps it go on nice and easy. The actual blade is held on by a single set screw. Make sure the set screw is aligned with the flat on the motor shaft. The motor is now mounted. So it's time to start looking at electrical here. The motor is now grounded. Here comes the fun part. All the electrical goes through that little hole. There's a bushing that in this passes through the metal there to protect the wires. That's been reinstalled through the sheet metal. This motor is capacitor start, so because we've replaced the motor, it's also a good idea to always replace the capacitor with it, especially if you do not have an identical motor. Because every, each motor has a different value of capacitor needed. So when in doubt, buy a new one, they're about five, ten dollars So definitely worth replacing it. Here's the original capacitor from the motor that burned up. Here's the one we're replacing it with. About the same dimension, quite a bit smaller though. This one is 15 microfarads, this one is five. So make sure you replace your capacitor if the value is different or if you're questioning if it's good. It's an easy thing to save yourself a headache down the road should it fail. Because this is an AC capacitor, the polarity does not matter. In our case, we have brown-white and brown for the capacitor leads. It does not matter which one is hooked where, as long as they're both on the capacitor. For powering our motor, we have four wires. In our case, purple is common, black is high speed, blue is medium, and red is low. We will be using black and purple for high speed. I'm going to get some wire nuts and some crimp terminals. Any unused wires, make sure they're properly capped as there is voltage present at them when the motor is running. This is a 240 volt unit, so basically we have two hot power feeds here, black and red. We are set for high speed. Our unused wires, we're going to cap these with wire nuts and then over the wire nuts, I'm going to add some electrical tape here to seal them in case any moisture gets in the cabinet here. 
and to ensure that they cannot get knocked off or fall off or anything. The extra length of motor lead, I'm going to bundle these up and zip tie them out of the way just to make sure they can't rub into anything and get in the way for servicing other stuff. So all of this gets bundled up. The electrical portion should now be done so the unit can be uh, powered up. If you are not comfortable around high voltages, make sure all safety covers are back in place and all fan guards are on. I have to check rotation on our fan here to make sure it's the right direction, so I'm actually going to do this with the covers off still for a moment here. Check things down here a minute. And watch which way the motor comes to a stop. And uh, we're going to have air conditioning in the office very shortly. But before we close it up, I'm going to vacuum out the return air system here just to help keep the crud out of everything. Remember, when working on air conditioners or other items with sheet metal enclosures, the edges are sharp, so watch your hands or wear gloves. When you finish up, don't forget to reinstall a new filter if yours is dirty, or just remember to change your furnace filter regularly to prevent failures of your blower. So, remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and donate. Thanks for watching. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.